Welcome everybody to the video. My name is Steph. So yeah, we had a real good discussion about AI in today's mentoring group session. So I thought you'd find it interesting. So this is from my mentoring group. We have bi-weekly group chats like this, coaching sessions. And today we got into AI because AI is something to look into nowadays. It's very important. And so we're going to be expanding in my own mentoring group, UncleSteph.com, shameless self-promo. We're going to be expanding the coverage of AI tool sets, how to be an AI implementer, an AI developer. Not somebody who creates AI, but somebody who understands the AI landscape and knows how to put it all together and make it work. Very valuable, especially if you want to get into freelance or you're working for large corporations and you want to start uh, speeding up the, uh, the production life, life cycle. Anyway, watch the video. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone is Hello. enjoying Sunday. Yeah, well, on my end, what's been new, I launched my first GPT, uh, my first chatbot, and that was a very uh, interesting experience. Um, I'd say I was surprised and impressed how quick it was to deploy one. I think the, most of the time I spent just figuring out how to do it, I rather said the settings and uh, uh, I run into a funny and annoying quirk at the same time with chat GPT. That is what, um, if you use your own avatar, it actually breaks it. So it doesn't say if you can upload the image for your own custom avatar and it, and it's an own issue. I don't know if by now open AI, uh, addressed it, but when I deployed my chatbot, that, uh, wasn't the case. Like you could like and and what what worked so far is if you just have it chat gpt generate an avatar for you and then it saves it so and it's there i found this mm -hmm. interesting so it's not a perfect uh yet in that sense so there is a few quirks here and there but i think it's very interesting and i am more um i see its potential and uh beyond of what it is because a chatbot you know you can ask questions it's smart but i see it as first step towards a revolution in the whole business processes because if anyone has worked in a corporation you might end up in a situation where you need to ask somebody like for example very often you use a platform or any other uh, you do any other process and there is a team responsible for it and you have to email the team because there is no documentation about like how to do it. And I think chatbots in the sense of a company, a large corporation would be essential at cutting that gatekeeping. Whereas you have people who, you know, who are running a process and they're the ones you have to ask a question. But if you can have all that knowledge uh, it dramatically increases productivity and saves time. Like you forgot something because usually if it's a company big enough, you will have like a, some uh, training department and you have to schedule a training session. So um, anyways, uh, I don't have any specific questions other than, um, Steph, what is your view of the chatbots as a way of reorganizing corporations because of the you know the currently hierarchical system they have that you have to reach out to somebody to ask a question whether you have that knowledge base as an ai power tool you can get a quick answer right away yeah yeah i was actually interested i was out to dinner with a friend of mine who's been in the ai business about five years now could be longer and he does that he creates chatbot services so he'll he has his own uh, AI, but he also uses GPT and others. Mm -hmm. So he will um, gather information from the client, construct narratives, train the AI. I mean, we were talking about that and he's showing how there's layers. So he'll use AI one to, to get a certain result and then he'll feed that result to AI two, which mm -hmm. then creates a better narrative out of it and so on and so forth. So yeah, 100%. I see the, the jobs that are going to be uh, nailed by AI are all those middle management paper pusher jobs. Um, mm -hmm. They're going to get, they're going to be, I think their heads are going to be on a chopping block uh, because yeah. that's where AI could take care of them. So that's where you got to keep on increasing your skills, especially your technical skills, because those are going to be more difficult to replace. He was showing me like mm -hmm. some really cool stuff, like really advanced stuff, like 
where he was extracting huge amounts of information, um, technical information from the client. And then the AI, one AI was organizing that information in a logical structure. And then he had another AI turn it into a really well-formed narrative. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty impressive. <laughs> it was pretty, Jesus. So it was like, oh, there goes copywriter jobs, you know? You're seeing that with like um, uh, the news business. The news business is getting slaughtered and decimated. Reporters are being fired like crazy. And I think AI is is accelerating that process uh, considerably. So yeah, I think it's a business to get into. I think um, like I have only a superficial knowledge of how this all this stuff works. I'm actually want to um, experiment with the idea of creating a, a, a Steph bot based on my thousands of videos on YouTube. And as I said, I, they're, they're mostly information-based videos. So there's a lot of info. So I would, I have to, there's one AI that will scan YouTube videos and pull out the, the copy. Oh. And then there's another AI that can then, you can turn that into a, a chat bot. And then you can do is another AI that will sample your voice. And then, then you can just, it will read text in your voice. And then you got another AI that could take your, your image and create like a, a visual avatar of yourself. Uh, I would imagine soon enough, a company is going to provide all of these in one streamlined process, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. But it's from the business perspective, like think about like even, um, even when customers call the support line, like for example, you have a dental insurance and you don't know if implants are covered or a crown is covered. You would call... Uh, and usually it takes you to be, you know, you call a company, the IVR answers for this question, press one, for that question, press two, for, and it's with everything. It's not just insurance. It's pretty much every big, um, every big corporation that's provided service to the end user. Uh, whereas if you have a chatbot that gives you uh, an answer quick, you don't have to, because there is this, a lot of people say, well, I'd rather to talk to a live person. Well, I might be in the minority, but I am, for example, myself, I'm someone who rather not have to call and wait 15, 13, or an hour on the phones. I would, if there is a system out there that I can ask, hey, is this covered? Or how do I do this? And if it's smart enough, the chatbot, I wouldn't call. I wouldn't, why would I want to talk to a human? Like, seriously, if I get an answer quicker, yeah, 100%. I think the answer is both, right? Because if you yeah. had the chatbots get good enough and they take, you know, 50% of the load off of people, sure. you know, it's worth it, you know? And some people will use it. And, you know, so, yeah, I don't know how quickly this is going to evolve. But yeah, I I want to, mm -hmm. now I'm back, back again. I want to wonder if it's, people ask me, are you going to put out React material? Are you going to put out React? I go, that's old school. There's plenty of videos on React and stuff. So my my as I think everybody knows, my thing is about how to take the code, which you learn mm -hmm. the fundamentals, how to turn it into money, whether mm -hmm. you get a job or so on, you know? So I think the next step is to look at AI implementations and then look at uh, high-level frameworks, low-code platforms, no code platforms like Wix Studio, as I mentioned, and other things. And and AI. So I can see a, a very lucrative business as a freelancer just implementing AI for people. You know, so it's, you know, I would consider it a low code or no code AI implementation. It's probably very va valuable because it's, it takes a certain amount of, it's going to take a certain amount of time to, to decipher all this stuff and figure out how to use it. So if you could come in and say, listen, we can train the AI and, and reduce your support staff requirements by half, easy gig, right? Yeah. And, and not only that, it will actually improve customer service if, like, seriously, most people, I think as someone, because I worked, I used to work years ago in a call center, and I can tell you most people don't call for customer service. They're calling because there is troubleshooting involved. So people, the assumption that people, oh, the company offers great service is true, but most people call because they have a problem. So it is not customer service. It is more of troubleshooting. So they, they have a pain factor that they want to overcome, and that's why they call. Yep, 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 yep. I can see that. So yeah, it's something worth exploring. I like to, um, time permitting, I like to explore that more with some of the content system. Um, but it's definitely worth exploring.
you know, I, you know, somebody who I have this, this, this mentoring program is like, I have to make decisions about what not to teach. Cause I could, I could just fill it with unlimited content and it would, would not serve the people necessarily. You know what I mean? But AI is something definitely if worth getting into looking at, you know, even from an implementer, implementer point of view, not, a, not necessarily creating AIs, but just how to right. implement all these different systems.